Rotten Tomatoes is almost everyone's point of call for finding out if a movie is worth watching or not. On the website there are two ratings, one being fresh when more than 60% of critics reviews are positive and rotten if the movie's positive reviews fall below 60%. But what about when the movie has 0%? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt Rogers and I watched Rotten Tomatoes' worst movies of all time. There's a list of more than 30 movies that have been unfortunate enough to be gifted this 0% title and I've handpicked a few to watch that I thought would be most interesting to talk about. Actually, interesting is probably not the word. Now there will be some spoilers for the movies I talk about today because frankly I just don't care about them and neither should you. But I will leave out any major plot points or twists just in case you want to scrape the bottom of the cinema barrel like I did. With each of these excuses for movies I will be deciding if whether they deserve this brutal rating or whether they deserve one positive review from me. But let's get into it, the first movie I suffered through was Max Steel. We got an action figure, a low budget animation, which I remember being a lot cooler to be honest, a higher budget TV show and now a live action movie. Max Steel has a semi-decent cast in a completely useless movie. I can't even begin to explain how stupid it is. First of all, the storyline is so bad. We follow Max through his formative years, who learns of his electrical powers that his mother is blatantly trying to hide from him. The acting's not awful and the CGI isn't bad, however the writing, especially in dialogue, is unbearable. I'm just not quite sure who this movie is aimed at. The best I could categorise it as would probably be for young children, but it takes itself too seriously for that. It kind of reminds me of that live action Dragon Ball Z in its execution. This one was probably the hardest to watch out of all of them, simply because you're just not bothered with how it turns out. Max tries out his new powers, meets a witty drone friend and is tasked with saving the world. There's also some sort of massive storm for some reason and the worst boss fight I've ever seen in a movie to boot. I couldn't even tell you many more details because it was just so hard to pay attention. And I do not feel the slightest bit of guilt in saying this movie did not deserve any positive reviews. The only stealing Max did was 93 minutes of my life. <laughs> Next up we have the 2016 remake of Cabin Fever. This is a perfect example of a completely pointless remake. It's one of those shot for shot remakes that literally copies the original from start to finish. Eli Roth's original came out in 2002, which I feel like is not long enough to vouch for a remake. The weird thing was that Roth returned as executive producer for this remake and despite the awful reception it had, Roth said he was genuinely happy with the film. Well good for him because the movie is garbage. It's the cliche story of teenagers getting away to a far-flung log cabin and then being terrorised by some sort of threat, this case being a flesh-eating disease. There's a lot of things wrong with this movie, the acting, the nonsensical plot, but it was the little things that really annoyed me. Like there's this scene where two of the guys are shooting at this vicious dog and meanwhile a couple of them are lying in bed inside the house, a few metres away, completely oblivious to the gunshots. Plus two of the guys look so similar that I was constantly messing up who was who. I did like the kid in the bunny mask who bites people, I thought he was cool. There was this one scene where this guy has to put his friend out of a misery because of this disease and he runs out of bullets in his gun so he ends up killing her with a shovel and then lighting her on fire. Yes, that actually happens. But that's all the positives I can muster for this one and we have another movie worthy of 0%. Moving on now to Dark Crimes. Based on a true story, Jim Carrey plays a disgraced cop who wants to earn back his reputation by digging up a cold case. The case centres around an author who wrote specific details about the case not known to the public regarding an underground perverted sex club. Carrey's acting is actually really good in this, he even has a subtle accent which I usually hate when actors attempt but he pulls it off. There were definitely some solid scenes, like Carrie bouncing off the author in the interrogation room and although the film is very macabre and serious, there were some Jim Carrey mannerisms sprinkled throughout. A bit of a weird note I had, I watched this movie with headphones on and I noticed that the audio kind of cuts in certain scenes whenever someone finishes their line and it was actually really obvious once you hear it, which comes down to bad sound editing. I actually didn't hate the atmosphere, it was grey and melancholic with a really well matched quiet minimal musical score, which I actually liked. But you know at the start of a mystery thriller when there's this constant rise of foreboding tension? It never actually manages to break free of that. And even with some last minute twists it still left you wanting more. 
One thing I really didn't get was Carrie's relationship with his mother. They have one conversation about dying alone at the start, and then she does at the end. But why? And why wasn't she mentioned throughout? Despite all of this, I actually don't think it deserves the harsh rating that it did. It actually managed to hold my interest from start to finish. Dare I say it was actually kind of memorable in a weird way, which might mean that I just gave it its first positive review. Next we have 1987's Jaws, The Revenge. One more attempt at writing the coattails of the original Jaws. However, as you'd all know, none of the sequels obviously came close, especially this one. If you're a subscriber to my channel, you're probably aware that I'm a huge fan of shark movies, but The Revenge is just boring. Lorraine Gary's character Ellen returns, who was the wife in the first two films, and we're introduced to her son, who at first we think is the main character and seems bearable, but then he's promptly killed off at the start by you-know-who, leaving us with his mother Ellen and random relatives who give us no reason to care about them and they're just boring as f Plus they break the only rule of Jaws, which is to not show the monster till the end to build tension. You see the shark multiple times throughout, and after the first time it just loses its fear factor. The best part of this movie was Michael Caine, who doesn't nearly have a big enough role, but that's probably a good thing. He has no business in being in garbage like this. <laughs> it's a no from me, another well-deserved zero. Now for the last one, and I could not have asked for a better title, The Disappointments Room. A nice couple, one of whom is Kate Beckinsale, move into a nice house in the country with their young son to witness the friendly atmosphere. Beckinsale gets stuck in an attic with some haunting figures from the house's past, which pushes her to her limits. These dark apparitions are where the movie goes wrong though. The idea is that these visuals are so horrifying that they send you mad, but not only are they not scary, you find yourself not even curious as to what actually happened in this house, leaving the movie with nothing left of interest. And if I see one more movie where the husband or wife says there's something wrong with this house, I'll go mad. Gerald McCraney was in it, who I always enjoy, but I think this cast would be feeling sorry that they were any part of this mess of a thriller. And I'm with the critics on this one, it's tough to find anything positive about it, living up to its name. But there you have it, some of the worst movies Rotten Tomatoes has to offer. But let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about more rotten movies in a future video, because surprisingly I actually had a good time watching these train wrecks. But I'll be interested to see what's the worst movie you've ever seen. I'll be chatting with you guys in the comments. But until next time, thanks so much for hanging out. If you had a good time, then spank that like button. And if you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard. This is Matt Rogers.